You didn't really think the Heat were going to let themselves get punked like that, did you? Did you really think that Spo and Hemi and Caleb and Gaucho Gabe were going to let themselves go down in history as the biggest chokers ever? Come on now. Come on. Come on! You get that out of here. Come on. Come on! Come on. Of course, Heat Culture pulled it out. And of course, the Celtics managed to pull a Celtics and go completely unreliable and completely horrible at the worst possible time. Of course, when the bleep really hit the fan, Miami was ready and Boston was not. Of course, when the bleep really hit the fan, the Heat were the Heat and the Celtics were the Celtics. I mean, what did we really expect? And make no mistake about that, that was a disaster. That was a catastrophe for the Celtics. It's one thing to lose a Game 7 at home, but it is another to get your ass beat. Grant Williams style. Unfortunately, I don't think that Grant was getting any attaboy ass slaps after the game last night. Nobody on the Celtics deserves any attaboy ass slaps after that bleep show. In fact, I hate to do this, and I thought about this, and I'm not even sure it's the right thing to do. And I'm not sure you'll allow it. I saw what happened when, for instance, any of my family tried to bust out of Boston and come to California. They dragged their ass right back. Like my dad was the only one who got out. My dad and one uncle. But after watching what I saw last night, I'm pretty certain that I would like to renounce my half chowed status after that garbage. Garbage! And yes, I am well, more on that in a minute. I'm well aware that Jason Tatum turned his ankle on the opening possession of the game and appeared to struggle with that injury the rest of the game. And, and, so, I just don't care. And really, neither does anybody else. You either play through it or somebody else has to step up. For instance, where the hell was Jalen Brown last night? Where the hell were any of the Celtics last night? To quote the GM, not exactly a bunch of lasers. Austin, too. I mean, exactly what was their game plan after shocking Miami and ripping game six at the last second? What was the game plan? To come in and knock over the backboard for game seven? They shot nine for 42 from beyond the arc. Now, normally I would say something like, I'm pretty sure that Joe Mazzulla has forgotten more basketball than I'll ever know. But I'm not even sure that's true. After you miss your first 12 threes, my guy, maybe you have somebody attack the basket. I mean, what an unbelievably sorry effort. You win three in a row. You absolutely rip Miami's heart out in game six to force a game seven in your own building only to get curb stomped at home. It's embarrassing to you, to your fans, and to me. Well, half of me, given that I'm half chowed. Back to my original point. After watching last night, I never thought that I would ever, ever say anything like this before. But I am thinking of going full no cal. And ignoring my half-chowed heritage because that was embarrassing as hell and insulting as hell to me as a half-chowed. Like, half-chowed, full-ass performance. And again, I am half-chowed, half-no-cow. And fully conflicted. My father was born in Boston And for some reason, I didn't know this until recently, my mother was born in NoCal. Half chowed, half NoCal. But after seeing what happened last night, I may renounce my half chowed status. I mean, make no mistake about this. Don't get this twisted. Boston was not built to get to the NBA Finals this year. They were built to win it all. 
So getting hammered in Game 7 in their own house to an 8 seed is disappointing as hell, regardless of how tough Miami is. And by the way, they're a hell of a lot tougher than the Celtics ever will be. They should have never been down three games to none to an 8 seed, and they should have never choked in Game 7 in their own place. What I'm saying is there is something inherently wrong with them. And this is not about Tatum rolling his ankle in the opening minutes. That's not what this is. There's something inherently wrong with them. Wrong in their DNA, wrong with their culture, wrong with their roster. So who is to blame? Is it the players or is it the coach? And how do you fix it? Because it's definitely broken. This is not a part of the process. Falling behind an eight seed, three games to none, and then choking and getting blown out at home in game seven is not a part of any process on the way to the Larry O. And even worse, half fam. (laughs) This is incredible. If we are still half fam. Even worse, half fam, it's not just the Celtics. It's the Bruins, too. Boston is the first city to lose a home game, a game seven, lose a home game seven to number eight seeds in both hockey and basketball in the same season. I mean, holy crap, half fam. Take that for data. Take that for data. And again, I really don't want to hear about Tatum and his excuses. I would love to hear what Jalen Brown's excuse is, though. How the hell does that guy, that alleged max-out dude, have that game in that situation? Especially when he knows his wingman is dinged. One for nine from three and eight turnovers is absolutely hideous from that dude in that spot. That's not stepping up. That's stepping down. That's stepping off a cliff and then taking the entire team with you. That's getting the entire team on a bus and then driving it off a cliff. In theory, the great thing about having two max players is that in a situation like that, you know, if for some reason something happens to one of them, or if for some reason one of them does not step up, at least you have the other one who's there to show up. But there was no alpha last night between Tatum and Brown, a.k.a. Robin and Robin. All the alpha was on the other sideline. All the dogs were dressed in heat uniforms last night, beginning with Caleb Martin. This dude's a freaking monster. He's a freaking assassin. He's a killer. Look, I'm not going to say that Jimmy Butler did not deserve to be the MVP. However, I would say Caleb Martin deserved it just as much. And last night, that dude came through huge. Just as the Heat culture came through huge. So we can all forget about them almost blowing the series. Because almost is worth nothing. Less than nothing. The Heat got it done. And they did it exactly the way they said they would do it. Just exactly the way Hemi Buckets declared that they would exactly a year ago. I know you saw that soundbite last night. But a year ago, the Celtics took the decisive Game 7 of the Conference Finals, and it was at that point that Jimmy Butler famously said, we will be back, and when we do come back, we will get over. Got to give it to Hemi. Dude could not have been more dead on. I guess you could add clairvoyance to this dude's long list of talents. And I know playoff Jimmy became store brand Jimmy for a couple of moments, even a couple of games in this series. But when it came to game game seven, when they had to have it, when they had to have it, Jimmy was himmy again. And when the Celtics had to have it, their guys were nowhere to be found. They're alphas. So as bumpy as that ride was for Miami in the series, The truth is they basically had enough to finish the job in Game 6 on Saturday night. Hemi was rough for three quarters in that game, but then he was absolutely electric in the fourth. He knocked down three of the biggest brass free throws you're ever going to see. It looked like they were good. It looked like they were done. It looked like they had finished, only to have this brass-busting moment that 
Well, frankly, you never expect to have happened, but it did. Because I want to give the Heat credit for not only staving off the biggest potential choke job in the history of the association, but for getting back up off the mat after that all-time kick to the stick. That all-time blast to their collective package. I have no idea how the Celtics blow the series after that. And they didn't just blow the series. They didn't even show up for Game 7. Like I said, Game 6 was really Game 7. And the Celtics apparently took that to heart because they treated that Game 6 like it was a Game 7. And then they treated Game 7 like it was a preseason game. Which is yet another brutal look for Joe Mazzulla. But if you're wondering what the hell happened, don't bother asking this guy because you're just going to get some sulky, butthurt, one-word response. Like all of a sudden this dude seems to think that he's like the hoops hood man or the non-accomplished, utterly clueless version of pop with no sense of humor and a really bad attitude. Even when Missoula is trying to be motivational, he's still absolutely miserable. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the bell to be the first to know when we do upload a new video.